Uh, we have an incredible product, uh, an incredible environment to, you know, to harvest wild catch in, um, and a great story to tell. So, so we sort of decided that Chatham Island Food Co's vision and purpose was to was to create more value um, for our industry and make sure that it remained on the island to help sort of grow um, and empower the community. So that's really what what's been driving us since then. This is Fishtails, a seafood podcast. I'm John Sussman. Way out in the Southern Ocean, 800 kilometres away from civilization, it is literally the edge of the earth. It takes a certain type of character to survive in this kind of isolation, but for local people, it is simply a way of life. For the 600 or so people that live on the Chatham Islands, everything is self-sufficient. A place where 60 knot winds clear a straight run down to Antarctica. A place of surging seas and wild, unpredictable elements. The Chathams are part of New Zealand, but they are utterly remote. Running a seafood business from a port in a city can be a challenge. Running a seafood business from a place as remote as the Chatham Islands demands a level of resilience, commitment and passion unimaginable. Delwan Tuanui is a seventh generation Chatham Islander. Coming from a long line of island farmers and fishermen, Delwan set up the Chatham Island Food Co in 2011 as he wanted to share the island's great food with the rest of the world today and tomorrow. My family's been involved in fishing since, since as long as we've been here, really. Um, as an Indigenous people, obviously, it was a food source. Um, and then as, as European settlers, um, uh, my grandfather, going back um, about eight or nine generations, used to feed the whalers and sealers, used to grow mutton and potatoes to feed the whalers and sealers who were sort of harvesting around the islands, you know, a couple of centuries ago. So I grew up on a sheep and beef property on the other side of the island, on the southwest side, um, and we have um, a, a farm there that runs along about 11 kilometres of coastline. Um, one of my earliest memories of seafood interacting with our daily lives was actually, you know, as a as a very young kid sitting on um, dad's motorbike as we're we're sort of mustering uh, sheep across these these flats we have down on the on, on next to the ocean. Um, Dad would always time his movement of stock with low tide, so that him and I could go out onto the onto the reefs in our gum boots and pluck kinna off the off the rocks, you know, and then he'd crack these kinna and put them in the front of his bike and as he was mustering his, his sheep around he'd be sort of sucking on these beautiful big fat kinna. So um yeah, that was probably one of my earliest memories of, of growing up where we grew up. Um and it's it's you know, that's a pretty powerful uh memory for me and it's something that we want to make sure you know our kids and their grandkids get to experience as they sort of grow grow into living on this island. The climate is cold and windy and the landscape desolate, but it is the unique marine landscape that makes this place home to some of the highest quality seafood in the world. Uh, so the Chatham Islands is um, a sub-Antarctic island. It's fairly windswept. Um, we have a range of landscapes from sort of flat low line land to volcanic peak, peaks. And, um, and uh, it's home to around 700 locals. Um, many of us, including my family, have been here, um, you know, since since the Polynesians came out of the Pacific and sailed via stars. Um, and we also have routes that connect us back to uh, explorers, whalers and sailors who, who turned up here um, a couple of hundred years ago. So the Chatham Islands is primarily a fishing community. Um, it's considered the last uh, fishing community left in New Zealand. So, so that basically means that the the a big chunk, I think it's around sixty to seventy percent of our local economy, is driven purely off fishing. After returning home to his family farm on the Chatham Islands from studying abroad. Delwyn Tuanui challenged himself to find a new way to add value to his family farm and the island's community. So I moved uh, to Melbourne um, and I was studying and as I was studying I, I set up Chatham Island Food Co and, and we were taking our produce, our wild harvest from the island and going direct to some of those magnificent chefs. Um, going into those restaurants in those early years 
and delivering to those chefs on a weekly basis and then being able to have a coffee or coffee or even a, a cheeky beer on a Friday with them and drill into what drove them and, and their passions um, was almost like an apprenticeship for me because it opened my eyes up to the other end of the supply chain, uh, to the passion, the enthusiasm, um, and the bloody incredible skills. Um, and it really was, you know, I, I look back on it now, it was a, it was a glimpse into 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 another world and it's those a lot of those chefs really you know i went there with a vision um and a, and a belief in our produce and our story and it was those guys in melbourne and sydney that gave me the confidence to say hey you do have something special to offer and um and go for it so it was an incredible journey actually an incredible way to um to educate myself it's it's sort of I guess in some ways you know some of those experience have become our guiding principles on what's important um, when when our product leaves the island because at the end of the day um, you know yes we've got a great product and a great story but we need great customers at the other end um, celebrating it either in their homes or in kitchens uh, and restaurants to um, to help it all work so so we moved back and and. You know, I guess big ambitions, fresh out of university, um, and and came back here um, after after spending time with chefs, um, and took over an old an old fish factory. Went from dealing with a few kilos to you know quite a few ton a week. And and uh, um, when uh, when a, a a local lad comes back and he's fresh out of uni, he jumps on a boat with a, a wily old fisherman who's got twenty thirty years experience and tells him that he's doing it wrong you, you sort of imagine how that went down it was uh pretty tricky to start with um but uh you, you know and uh it was re- it was it's really just about a journey and it's about working alongside these guys um getting out on the boats i spent a lot of time on the boats with them um just showing them different ways to improve the quality of their catch um and i guess at the end of the day john nothing uh Nothing speaks louder than a, an extra few dollars in the wallet at the end of the day. So making sure that, and, and I guess that's what value adding is all about. Is it's 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 about adding value. Um, and and you know, so we were able to get out on the boats, introduce new, new techniques around slurrying as soon as that fish is caught, um, to really lock in that freshness and that flavour, and and take those take taking all of those fishermen on the journey with us. Um, and I'll tell you what. When you get a fisherman who's who's had very little um, focus or guidance on quality, all of a sudden you got you got a bloody upstarted university student badgering him every day, and then he gets to see a massive improvement on, on the quality of his fish. He gets to take you know some fillets home, and and his wife's banging on about how much better it tastes now than it used to, and then uh, you know his uh, bank account's got a little bit more in it at the end of the week. You pretty quickly gather momentum um, and trust and belief, and it just snowballs. Um, and I guess, you know, uh, going out on the boats, getting um, getting dirty with those fishermen, um, getting involved with them, um, and taking them on that journey is what's been able is what's enabled us to really lift lift our quality, lift the pride that they have in what they do, um, and and you know feed that through to the market and and that. That quality and that pride is seen in the product and obviously the customers see that and it comes back to us in a positive way. There's good reason Chatham Blue Cod is sought out by top chefs around the world. It's a unique and special fish, indigenous to the Chathams with a delicate sweetness and fresh, subtle oceanic tang. It's got the hallmarks that only cold water wild fish taste of. In the colder months when the fish fatten up, the flesh takes on a wonderful buttery richness which makes for superb eating. Yeah, it's a it's an absolute iconic fish, especially when you sort of uh, cross the Cook Strait and head south from the North Island. Um, and it's it's something that's only it's a species that's only found around the Chatham Islands and around the you know the bottom end, primarily off the South Island. It's found nowhere else in the world. Uh, it's an inshore fish, which means it's it's living on reefs in depths of water from you know a few meters up to a couple of hundred, um, and incredibly robust um, hunter um, and, and a very, very picky appetite. So they're, they're scavenging around on the on the ocean floor, chasing power and crayfish, you know, uh, as a big part of their diet. Um, 
in really, really cold sub-Antarctic waters and you get a beautiful, uh, sweet, delicate flesh. So something that we've been fishing out here for, you know, I think, I think it's something like 100, and 100 plus years now. Um, it's been caught around the islands, a thriving fishery and absolutely beautiful. Um, and it's something we as locals are incredibly proud of. And it's, I guess it's, it's, that, it's the species that, you know, really got Chatham Island Food Co started. Dell sees his role as a custodian of the waters in which his team fish around the Chatham Islands. With a firm belief in working to the highest sustainable practices, they exclusively use pot and free dive hand harvest methods, which have remained the same for over a century. With zero bycatch, zero impact on the environment, and guaranteeing absolute premium quality, the Chatham Island Food Code prides itself on the highest moral and quality standards. It's tough, cold, and brutally dangerous work but the results are without question. So one of the things we focus on out here is, is our methods of catch, and it's something that uh, my wife and I, when we started our business, was was that you know um, was a real priority for us, is making sure that we believe in the, the catch methods that our fishers and our divers uh, use. Um, so our, our blue cod and crayfish are all caught in pots, um, and the kinna and power are gathered by hand. Um, so we have free divers um, diving for these things. Um, they might go anywhere as deep as 20 odd meters, gathering with their hands off the bottom of the, you know, the ocean floor. Um, and Kinna is one of those things that they're gathering. Kinna is, you know, what I call um, the wild caviar of the Chatham Islands. It's it's essentially what it is. Um, really, really sweet, delicate flavor. Um, can be a bit of an acquired taste for some people, but um, again, you know, uh, really versatile if you're prepared to step outside of the circle a bit in the kitchen and, and experiment. We've got a, a, a diving community here of, of, of young men um, primarily, um, and they are using small, small boats, you know, six metre vessels, um, and they kit themselves up when the weather's good and they can, they can get out, they're out onto a reef um, and spend the day diving for, you know, the canner or the power, black abalone. Um, again, it was something that I did as a, as a young guy, um, a, a magnificent job, you know, it's, it's cold um, and you're working underwater all day, um, but very rewarding, um, uh, both financially and, and physically and emotionally. Um, it's, it's great for the body and the mind, you know, free diving, but it also comes with a huge amount of risk. Unfortunately for our guys, uh, the Chatham Islands is a hot spot for great white sharks. Um, and, you know, I know plenty of my friends and cousins who are still divers today have had, you know, 15 plus encounters with a great white shark. Luckily for them, um, you know, they live to tell these tales, um, but it, but it is one of the risks of the job. So we have fish come in on day boats um, and it comes in, you know, late at night after the guys have been fishing, fishing that previous day. And we're in here um, early birds in the morning um, on daybreak or just before uh, the guys are in the factory um, and we're straight into, into cutting that fish. We, we take our blue cod. It comes off the boats in, in big insulated bins we call dough labs uh, and, you know, covered, covered in ice uh, and, and we get it straight onto the table and the guys are whacking those fillets off, those beautiful white fresh fillets, um, whack them off. They go into our two kilo branded boxes. Um, we have our own brand, brand of blue cod, Chatham Blue, that really identifies the difference that we've brought to, to the value chain. Um, and we put those boxes into a freezer and we get it down to minus 45 as quick as we can. So the key for us is to is to you know ensure that we're looking after that fish the second it comes over the surface out of those pots into a slurry and then we we whip the fillets off and into a blast freezer and really crank it down down to minus 45 and lock that flavor and that freshness in so it's essentially what we're focusing on on a on a daily basis often the concept of seafood sustainability can be a hackneyed cliche Prosecuted by urban types for whom a single dimension argument exclusively about the environment denies the need for a broader, deeper and more inclusive approach to commercial, cultural and resource sustainability, which of course are equally as important. 
For Dell, the concept of sustainability demands an holistic view. Sustainability, I, I look at it a bit differently to, to a lot of people. It's, it's, it is an important word, um, and it's, and it's important. It's a very important concept. Um, out here, we, we, we've just simplified it even further, and it's really about sustainability for us. It's about survival um, as a community, as an industry, um, and as something that we love and that we've done for centuries. So it's about survival for us. So we, when we look at uh, our practices, when we look at what we're doing um, within our business and, and around the community, we we look at it from from a survivability point. How do we, how are our future generations going to be able to survive? In this environment, um, and 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 make a really good living. Well, one of the keys to that is is the strength of our resource. If we've got good fish stocks uh, in the sea, then we will survive, and we'll have a, a, a great life and a great future, as will our kids and our grandkids. Um, so, so that's our focus when we when we're looking at you know how we manage how we manage that resource, um, how we look after the stocks, um, and how we work with fishes. Wild-caught seafood is so often seen as a resource in desperate decline. However, there are many fisheries and fishers around the world for whom wild-caught seafood is not only their business, but it is truly their life. For these folk, many of whom are the next generation catchers, protecting and promoting their resource is not only an ethical obligation, but it makes smart commercial sense. Wild-caught seafood, and I'm just going to speak on behalf of wild-caught seafood because that's my background. I think we have an incredible resource um, you know, not only on the island, but in, in many parts of the world. And um, uh, I think the next generation of, of fishermen and women in the industry coming through are going to focus a lot on on their, their fishing practices um, on the sea and in the sea um, to ensure that, you know, how they, how they are extracting seafood is done in a way that's really, really beneficial um, uh, and with a with really low impact on the environment, it's that's obviously important because you know it, it's our future, it's our industry, it's our livelihood. So, so I think we'll see a lot of shift in in um, in the way that seafood is harvested out of the ocean, um, and and I, then I think we're going to see a big shift in the way the industry as a whole plays with that beautiful, um, you know. Seafood, when it comes, when it gets to into our hands, it's obviously you know doing um, doing as little as possible and getting it in front of people in a raw state, in a fresh state, in a in a whole state is really important. But also, you know, thinking about how we can deliver to customers in a way that really minimises waste, that utilises all parts of the fish, um, and that gives people the confidence to have a crack at experimenting in their kitchens. Um, in a really convenient way, I think is is going to be a big part of the future, and that's already starting to happen, obviously, um, and will continue to to happen. There's obviously, um, you know, we we look at the health of people in general, the way they they want to um, dive into their health a lot more. I think COVID's really really changed the landscape. People are thinking more about healthy eating, about eating at home, eating with family more. Um, celebrating, you know, local foods, celebrating quality food, um, and and looking at natural and sustainable ways to to improve their health. And I think, you know, seafood ticks all of those boxes, um, and it's going to be really exciting to see to see how our our industry, you know, unfolds globally, locally, uh, going into the future. So I'm I'm bloody excited about it, to be honest. For many who have grown up in a small rural community, the sense of pride and commitment is deeply embedded in their DNA. While there are many challenges, Chatham Island Food Co. continues to grow and innovate. Their focus has always been on working with the best local fishermen to produce seafood of outstanding quality, whilst adhering to sustainable fishing practices and with a staunch commitment to their f- and with a staunch commitment to their community and its future. Uh, what gets me up in the morning, mate, is is uh, the people I work with and and the product that I work with it's it's really that simple it sounds really cliche but you know I'm working with my cousins my mates uh, I'm working with fishermen that have been doing it for generations I'm working with fishing families that have got fish in their blood um, they're passionate uh, we're working with a beautiful iconic unique product um, and I'm doing something that 
uh, I think future generations are going to be able to pick up and 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 take and and you know um, and grow from it. This is Fish Tales, a seafood podcast. A Deep in the Weeds production, I'm John Sussman. Follow us on Instagram at Fishtails Seafood Podcast or email us at fishtailspodcast at deepintheweeds.com.au. Stay tuned for more tales from beneath the surface of the seafood world every Friday on your podcast app.